The question I get asked the most on this channel is where should I start with Stephen King? But the question I get asked the second most is what is the scariest Stephen King story? Hey, what's up, bookworms and constant readers? Mike back today to talk a little more Stephen King. And today, guys, we'll be getting into some of those stories that kind of stick with you long after you stop reading them. I think the question I get asked the most, obviously, is what is the scariest Stephen King story? Actually, I said outside of, you know, where should I start with him? But I've made that video twice on the channel. So I thought for spooky season of fun, we'll be kind of go through Probably the books I think would be what I would call my 10 scariest. Now, with this, guys, you got to understand there's something different that scares everyone. So not all these are going to be scary to you. You might say, hey, these didn't really scare me at all. I think it's going to be a little different to everything. That's what makes Stephen King books special is there's something a little different for everyone in there, especially you know if you're reading them at different ages. So it really just comes down to what scares you. But these are the 10 I feel like have really stuck with me for a different reason or another, and we're going to talk about those. These will be ranked, guys. But before I begin, I want to say, hey, uh, there's going to be some surprises in here because I am not doing just novels. I am also including novellas and short stories to make things just a little more fun. Let's kick off a couple of uh, honorable mentions. These are ones that I think maybe might be considered somewhat scary, but they didn't really make the top 10 here for me. Uh, Carrie, I never really found Carrie as much a, a horror story, as much as it was, you know, a horrific kind of thing. Like what happens to everybody at the end? I felt like it was it was earned. They deserved it, you know. Uh, they 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 poked the bear and they got what they deserved. I think Carrie's mom was actually the scariest part of that story. And I think if you had that kind of upbringing, I think that you would have actually probably quite scared of it. The stand again, yes. If this was a real world deal, obviously. 99.6% of the population dying, yeah, that'd be pretty scary, right? But it never really came as something that I'd be like, oh my God, I'm like waking up in fear of what I read in this book. And same goes with Christine. I feel like with Christine, yeah, the idea of a, a killer car, sure. Sure, that could be that could be kind of scary. But nothing in that book ever really, like I said, made me stay up at night. Uh, you know, what was that noise that was going on? Whereas these 10 do for one reason or another. Let's kick it off with number 10 with a uh, man's best friend. I'm going a little crazy here. This, of course, is Cujo. Now, with Cujo, I think this is one of those it's going to be harder to read, I think, when you're a parent because... This is back when King was vicious, guys. This is when he was full-blown functioning alcoholic. And, I mean, he was he, he was so drunk when he wrote this, he doesn't even remember it. So this is really before he was super, super heavy on the narcotics. And he was really just alcohol abuse still. And he said he was so drunk when he was writing this book, he doesn't recall writing it. And I think maybe that's why the ending is quite what it was. But I say the, you know, just the idea of, you know, this fluffy, friendly family dog one day turning on you, that's always something that's going to be quite scary. Almost in that kind of, you know, the, the you see in like the zombie movies where the little girl's coming after you and they, they can't kill them because, oh, that's their daughter. And it's like, no, you're not looking at them. You're looking at the thing that killed them. Same here with Cujo. But the thing is, is Cujo, this is like basically a small horse and it's got some horse power and it will knock you the F out. So yeah, the idea of, again, the family dog deciding that it wants to chew you up one day very, very scary. And there's some really, really just pulse pounding stuff in there. And if you're claustrophobic, I think this book might get you a little bit in that regard as well. Number nine, guys, we're going to move on to a short story collection. This is a skeleton crew. I have the jaunt. Now, this is exciting for me because I really never talk about the short story collections on this channel very much because I decided not to do those into the multiverse, at least not yet. With the jaunt, I mean, I'm fascinated with the idea of space travel, of wormholes. Like, uh, I love like Stargate SG-1. You know, you're making wormholes and gate travel and things like that. And the jaunt kind of really kind of plays with that a little bit. But this is what you have to, you have to kind of have to be put under. You have to be unconscious or else apparently the journey, whenever they do like these trips, uh, lasts like an attorney and you will go mad because you'll be in solitary the whole time you'll go mad. And just the, the way that it kind of plays around with that. And then with it has that big shocker of an ending, which is just completely, just as a parent, is something that I think would be just absolutely terrifying. But I read it when I was younger and it scared me just as much because the idea of being kind of left alone in complete solitary and nothingness for uh, infinity, that's just, wow, that's just some jarring, jarring stuff. 
But uh, the decisions that the characters make in that book will uh, kind of be like, what are you doing? What are you thinking? But it does actually quite scary. Because, guys, in the end, space is scary. And something like wormholes is probably something we shouldn't be messing around with. And anytime Ke Steen kinda, uh, Stephen King kind of dips his toe into science fiction, it's going to have my, my attention a little bit. Number eight, guys, this is from a novella collection of Four Past Midnight. I have to go with The Library Policeman. Now, if this list was the most disturbing Stephen King books, this might be number one or two. Because this story is one of those where I will tell people, no, no, I'm not kidding. I'm not saying that it's scary. You can't, I mean, if you can't handle some stuff that will probably be quite scarring, I tell people probably skip this one because this is the most disturbing one. And it's it's scary in a way that it isn't the monster in the story. This is a real person doing awful things to somebody. And it will kind of raise that awareness of like how easy of a target children are because, you know, children are very trusting. You know, they're somewhat gullible at a younger age, you know, and they're easily tricked. They're easily bamboozled, I guess you would say. And what happens to the protagonist in this story is just one of the most horrifying things that I've ever read. And that's before you get to the big scary monster in this book. That's the human monster. So King's theme of all of his stories is that humans are the real monsters. And it's very prevalent in the library of policemen. There's a reason, guys, that this one has never been adapted. Because I don't think you could do it in a tasteful way. And it's just, it's so, it's, it's messed up. It's messed up. And like I said, this is one of those stories where you have an incredibly scary monster in it. And it's the second scariest thing in the story. So, yeah, check out The Library of Policeman if you absolutely have no buffer and you have no restrictions in your mind of bad, bad things. Because uh, on my reread, I was like, man, I, this is this is really, really tough to read. It really is. And uh, it might be one of the toughest things of his I ever have read. And, <laughs> and I've read some messed up stuff from the man. But that one right there will always kind of stick in my mind for those reasons. Number seven, another short story. Got to go back to Skeleton Crew again, guys, in case you're missing the lead here. Skeleton Crew is an awesome, awesome short story collection. The Raft is one of the scariest stories by Stephen King ever because me, I am scared of open water. It's just one of those things, the last of phobia. It's mostly the ocean because it's so big. Now, this takes place at a lake, but you know, there can't be quite a big lake. Just the idea you don't know what's below you. You're in this big, wide open space. It isn't necessarily that you're afraid of getting eaten, you know, by something in the water, although that might be the case in this story. But just the idea of, of wide open space with, you know, no firm ground to stand on kind of thing. It's just something that uh, it, it's hard for me to grasp. And this story just dives right into that. You're on a raft in the middle of this lake and there are things below you. Well, let's just say they don't have good intentions in mind. So I definitely don't want to spoil it, guys. These are these short stories. You can read them in one sitting over a cup of coffee. They're great. And The Raft is one of those that I still think about today and get chills every time I'm near a body of water. So uh, you would think of something that I'm already scared of, like open water. And of course, you've got Stephen King saying, hey, I'm going to write a story about that. You knew it was going to be high on my list. But that's one that, uh, yeah, I'll always recommend to people. You just want a taste of what makes Stephen King scary. And you don't have a lot of time. You don't want to read a big tome. Check out The Raft. Just check out Skeleton Crew overall. It's a great, great collection of some really, really scary stuff. Number six, this one always kind of surprises people that I have this so high. But Gerald's Game is scary for a multitude of reasons. First, the idea of degloving is... Google that. Google that. I dare you. Degloving. Uh, that's, uh, that, that's, that's already scary. The idea of being you know locked to a bed with no one to help you. That's scary. And people always think this is... Oh, how is that scary? It's just a fetish book. Guys, you don't know if you haven't read what this book has in it. The Moonlight Man is one of the scariest damn things Stephen King has ever wrote. There's a chapter in here where you don't know, have you ever had that time, that, that kind of moment where you wake up in the middle of the night and it's completely pitch dark in your room and you just know there's someone in there with you? That's how you feel? That is the whole book here. It's just every time the sun goes down, Jesse's locked in this bed and you are terrified. You're like looking at corners and stuff. This is that type of book where you'll be reading it and you'll be looking around your own house. Like, is there someone in the house with me? Because it is absolutely scary stuff. And then, of course, yeah, like I said, having to deal with some of that childhood trauma when you have all this time alone to collect your thoughts and you might be going a little mad. So, Joel's Game, very, very underrated story in every sense of the word here. I think that with this story, you get so many different things, but it's all about Jesse dealing with her demons internally as well as externally because of what is going on 
in this room with her. Very, very scary story, guys. And I think that's one that people would never expect to be one of the scariest stories. Number five, no surprise here, guys. Misery has got to be one of Stephen King's Scariest stories because it has one of the scariest antagonists in it, in Annie Wilkes. I think this is an all-timer. And the thing was, guys, people don't know this, is this book was scary before the movie came out. Uh, uh, Kathy Bates just made it more scary, I think, because she just uh, she just embodied this role, like ripped it straight from the page, how good that she was in that role. But Misery, man, again, that theme of humans are the real monsters, and Annie is one of the biggest ones. What Paul goes to and that it's just one of those kind of things where you put yourself in Paul's shoes and you feel like every time Annie comes in the room something bad is going to happen some kind of pain is going to happen to Paul here and it's just it's tough to read so many times where you're just like man I just honestly if I was Paul I would just hope that she would kill me I I do because I just can't endure any more of this and I think that this is the book to me that if you could describe pain perfectly without ever having experienced real true pain in your life this book does it and it will make you have aches and pains while you read it because he's so good at describing that but amazing amazing story but man it will have you definitely not wanting to trust strangers let's just put it that way for sure and you think about if you have uh you know if you have a public uh, you're a celebrity of some sort you're a public figure and everyone that you, I mean, there could be some crazies out there, man. And you never know. And with Annie, you know, you, she seems perfectly normal until she doesn't. And that's what makes her so, so scary. Number four, guys, the scariest vampire story of all time. Yes, even over Bram Stoker, this is Salem's Lot. Now, I, I brag on Salem's Lot a, a, a whole bunch. I almost said Salem's Lot a lot. But, you know, I thought that would not really work very well. Maybe it would. Maybe it would. Salem's Lot, I, I brag about the Salem's Lot a lot. Now that I've continued to just blabber for, you know, a couple minutes here, I've talked about this a many, many a time about what makes this story so scary to me. Obviously, I mean, vampires when they were still scary. Vampires when they wanted to eat you, they didn't want to date you, they didn't want to live in harmony, they wanted to take over the city. They either wanted to turn you or they wanted to turn you into a Happy Meal. That was their goal. So that's already scary. But there's this one section in this book I've always kind of had this little fear of the woods. We grew up kind of in the country when I was younger, and we have miles and miles of woods behind us. And I remember one night hearing like tapping on my window, and I look out my window, and there's a coyote on the patio. Yeah, it scared the hell out of me, right? So I was already kind of freaked out about the woods. There's one section here where the kids are going through the woods, and they're being pursued, and you can't see what's going on. Bone-chilling stuff, man. Just really, really scary. And I mean, do I even need to talk about that window scene? I mean, that window scene is pretty much a part of pop culture about how famous it is and because it is that scary and king. Well, have you, let's just say, drawing your curtains before you go to bed at night because uh, he hits all of the scary points in that one. Number three, I don't think this one should be any surprise except that it's not number one for me. I got to talk about The Shining because this is a book obviously that has all the hype in the world for being one of the scariest novels ever. And it is. It is. I think that Room 217, that single chapter, is still the scariest thing The King has ever written. No matter what age I am, no matter how comfortable I am in life, how much I'm like, hey, this is just a story. It's all made up, right? Room 217 will still give me those shivers down my spine. It is just that well written. I was seriously, I reread this in, I think, 2019. And I was seriously reading it. And I heard like a, you know, houses make like noises. And I'm like, what was that? <laughs> While I was reading it at like one in the morning because it's so well written. But yeah, that's uh, definitely a book that'll have you jump into some shadows. I think after you read it, you'll be thinking that everything in your house is haunted because of the way that he describes the overlook in that. And just it's just such a sense of dread and just watching this man go slowly insane and hoping that he doesn't hurt his family and this small child, you know. It's just it's 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 creepy stuff. And it's it's got a legacy, obviously. And it's one of those, like I said, guys, I feel like the book and the movie are both fantastic. They're both both great for different reasons. But a lot of the same reasons as well and that's definitely one of the scariest but room 217 guys that chapter alone will make your skin crawl so good number two my favorite Stephen King book of all time this is it I think that it is the book that was responsible for making my generation at least absolutely terrified of clowns now I know about Gacy and things like that obviously have made the public kind of scared of clowns but I just remember that uh, when I was younger 
Had Ronald McDonald at my birthday party. Didn't think anybody. No big deal. No big deal. Now I've been like, get the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, to this day, guys, I still, I mean, 45 years old. I'm a grown ass man, right? I don't, I'm, this is just a story. No big deal. I will still take the long way around to walk around a sewer drain. That's the effect that this book had on me, for sure. I still don't like sinks sometimes. So this book has so many things that show what scare us as children can still scare us as adults. And I think that that's one of the things that makes this book great is there's all those things that you can say, you read it younger and say, yeah, I'm scared of all the same stuff that these kids were, but I don't know, the adult story is kind of eh. And you get a little older and you've went through some of those wars that those adult characters have been through and you're like, yeah, that's, this stuff's pretty damn scary too. So uh, you got all your usual stuff you got your big scary spider. You got your clown. You got your, you know, werewolf and, and the, the the Gill Man. All that stuff. All those Universal movie monsters and things like that. That stuff's all scary. But you know, again, the human element. You know, you think about Beverly's dad. You think about Henry Bowers. Yeah, all things like that that just continue to get that theme across that humans are way worse. Then the monsters, even when it's an eight-foot-tall, scary clown with razor-sharp teeth. Yeah, it's, it's amazing that he's able to get that across. But uh, I feel like I could probably hang out with Pennywise before I wanted to hang out with Henry Bowers. You know, so that's uh, just an amazing, amazing story. And I think that by now, I mean, because of the success of those movies in 2017, 2019, I feel like a whole new generation has discovered this story and found out what makes it so great. Sure, they want to talk about that one chapter, but you know what? Hey, maybe you want to put that under something that was scary but this book uh is amazing but it is absolutely gonna leave some things that will scar you a little bit i think and number one guys if you've watched this channel at all you probably know where i'm going with this i feel like everyone either has the shining it or pet cemetery as their number one and i wouldn't be upset with any of those three i mean i wouldn't be upset if you put salem's lot there as well i think any of those four really could be Number one, for me, I think what made Pet Cemetery so amazing is when I read it for the first time, I was a teenager, I just wanted Stephen King to scare me. You know, that's why, you know, you felt rebellious. You want to read Stephen King and the, you know, during Gen X because, oh, he's, he's, he writes these scary books that are almost like forbidden by your parents. And yeah, it did. It scared me for all those scary reasons. Pascal, horrifying, horrifying stuff, you know? And I, I think that you were, you got what you wanted. And then I read it again a few years ago after I had kids and it was scary for a completely different reason. So it has those actual like nightmare scares and then it has those scares of things like as parents, I think what we fear the most is losing our children, right? So it makes it scary for different reasons, but it, it hits a home run, an absolute grand slam on both ways that it can scare you. And that's what makes this book truly special. And there's no way I couldn't not put it number one on this list because no book that he has ever written captures grief and loss quite like this one does and so i mean it's just it's it's going to get you uh whether you have kids or not i think this book's going to get you for different reasons but you know if you are you know with very small children still there's some things that are going to make you want to go run and hug your kids because it's very very scary stuff and that's why it will always probably be number one on my scariest story so if someone asks me mike what is the scariest stephen king book i can read i will absolutely tell them pet cemetery without a shadow of a doubt so that's the 10 that i have sure there could be some more i know i didn't put the mist on here that'll probably be the biggest one that people didn't put on here look i thought the mist was the movie was probably scarier i felt like than the book uh the book was like right when it got going i felt like it was kind of kind of ended you know and it didn't have that that famous ending that the movie now now has but uh yeah i think the mist was kind of a, a pretty spooky story but again that's one of those i wish had been a novel and not a novella because I felt like I could have done so much more with it. So it just missed out on this list. But I knew I was going to get some uh, people asking me why I didn't put that one on here. If you guys like this, I could make a companion video for it where I could talk about the best non-horror Stephen King books. You know, Because everybody thinks that Stephen King just writes scary books. And the man at this point has wrote more drama, thriller, suspense, mystery, detective crime novels than he has horror novels, I think. So you get that label. He got famous, obviously. He cut his teeth on being the master of horror. So that's what people are always going to fucking think of him as. I get that. But he has written way, way more non-horror stuff. So I would love to talk about some of those stories if you guys are interested. But since this is the topic I get asked all the time, what is the scariest Stephen King story? I thought I'd talk about him. I hope I've explained 
why. So are there scarier stories in this? Maybe, maybe. Again, it depends on what scares you, I think. So these are ones that scared me for those reasons and ones that I still constantly think about in daily life when I'm going through an experience and I'm like, no, I'm not going out there on that raft or, you know, <laughs> I don't want it to be that dark in the room. I don't need a nightlight, but you know what? I don't need to be completely pitch dark in my room. And uh, no, I don't want to go into an empty hotel. No, thank you. Like we went to Great Wolf Lodge with the kids and we had this long hallway, long, I mean like a football field long. And I was like, I'm getting some shining vibes off this. I'm gonna go take the long way around. <laughs> you said this long hallway. So these things have always stuck with me. And I think that's why Stephen King's books leave such a lasting impression just for that reason. But guys, what about you? What is the scariest Stephen King book that you have ever read? Are you gonna pick up any of these? I would love to know. So why don't you drop in the comments, guys, and let me know. And I will talk to you there.